she asked me, what are you for? And I said, look, there is a fine line between mercy and murder in the Bible. We have all lots of scripture about mercy, but we do still don't have the right to take, take another person's life, even if they're in that <laughs> suffering. You, who will do it? Yes. You just have to trust him. He will do it. I believe he'll alleviate my mom of that choice. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree. And liver cancer, it's usually quick anyways. So. Yeah. Well, we continue to hold, you know, keep you undergirded in prayer, Chris. Amen. You and your family, brother Chris. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that I have uh, a heavenly Father to guide me in these times, and I'm grateful to have a family to pray for me in these yeah. times. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm my prayers. Are, are always with you guys and continuing the ministry and and brother Matthew you are doing just a, a wonderful job just laying it out and and being uh, civil and and full of wisdom about things I was just watching part of one of your vid the last video that you just did about false teachers about prophets and I'm 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 all with you man I'm all with you and uh, it's, it's good. Welcome, everybody. I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late. Um, it's blessing the ministry over, for sure. Overslept a little bit. How's everybody doing? Chris, you doing okay, brother? I, I'm, uh, like I said, the who is holding me up and, and, and give, giving me words of, of wisdom to uh, guide me through these troubled times and and I'm, like I said I'm, I'm grateful that I have a heavenly father that loves me and I'm grateful that I have a family that prays for me and and I'm, I'm gl also glad like I said that the ministry is going forward and 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 things are things are being done and 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 you're moving forward too and 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 uh, he's moving forward through us and and that's what matters I guess <laughs> Um, stay in touch with me, with me, um, call me if you need something, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate our last phone call too. Thank you very much. Um, but I'll, I'll let you get into the, the, the code class. Uh, I'm, like I said, who is lifting me up and he's using me in these times to minister, not just to my family, but to somebody else now too, as well. So that's, that, that helps. He's, right. he's sending people for me to minister to. Uh, and uh, so very good all right let me open up with prayer and we'll get started welcome to our newest student marissa who's i'd, I'd say who's joined us welcome <laughs> all right about you who are here we are father once again and we're gathered in your name and uh, we just uh, ask that you join us here today father that you would send your ruach kankudesh to dwell with us to lead us um, we also to ask that you you send your messengers to keep us protected from the enemy. Keep our words here, Father. Let him not um, interfere with our meeting. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, as you may have seen, I've done a couple of videos. Um, and I kind of knew they were going to be a little hard to receive so many people are you know love mark taylor and you know he's such a likable guy but when you get down to the brass tacks of it and you really examine what's going on there can you distinguish is there a difference between our prophets and false prophets and um, i think that was just an example then i had to do a follow-up video about tribunals because um the, the mixture of reality and myth on the internet is so thick that people are just running wild with, you know, Trump is going to do this and that and that and Kavanaugh's in and they're going to be military tribunals now. And, and so there's just like, wait a minute, wait, let's, let's get grounded back in reality and talk about what could actually happen and what will never happen. Okay. Because there's, there's a fine line. Um, military tribunals are for military personnel or Military combatants who have decided, um, you know, if they're a civilian, they decide you want to do something. They are politically motivated or, or they're motivated to do something. They go and kill a bunch of people. 
is during the time of war, they can be prosecuted under both civilian and military. Say if they are put under civilian and are found innocent, they can still be brought up under a military um, court and found guilty. There's no double jeopardy involved. Um, but we're nowhere near that. And the fact that Lindsey Graham was addressing the longstanding problem since 9-11 of enemy combatants who have been in Guantanamo Bay and uh, waiting trial, because sometimes it's not clear exactly how to try them. Because if they're an American citizen, you got far left liberals who want to put them under the Fourth Amendment and give them rights and say, well, he's an American citizen. You can't do that. You can, you know, even if they're in Afghanistan and they're captured, like we have captured American citizens who decided to go and fight for the enemy in a foreign country and then were captured. How do you deal with them? Are they under the Fourth Amendment or do they go under a military tribunal? This is a question that Lindsey Graham was trying to clear up with this judge because sometimes these kind of issues will come to court where a far leftist will bring these rights of this person. And so I think he was trying to distinguish if this is a problem continuing to be a problem, are you going to be able to handle this in some way? Uh, unbiased <clears throat> or, or was he a liberal and he's he's looking to give them um, you know protection under the shadow of the Fourth Amendment um, so that's kind of why, why I did that uh, 50,000 indictments in military tribunals is a is a fairy tale um, Nuremberg if you, if you guys know anything about Nuremberg um, this was all the Nazi war criminals that were captured and they tried them. That's a military tribunal, which military generals and leaders, um, Slobodan Milosevic, Milosevic, the Serbian leader, you guys remember that? He was brought under, under a military tribunal in The Hague because of war crimes, because he had murdered or was accused of murdering thousands and thousands of Muslim Serbians. You guys remember this was during a Clinton administration. He was brought under a military tribunal for genocide. The only time anybody's gonna be brought into a military tribunal, like people are expecting the Clintons or Obama, it's, it's usually when they're guilty of a war crime like genocide or something really bad. Military tribunals will not prosecute civilians. There's no way it will happen. So um, that's why I did that, that video, because it just had to be some clarification. All these people are running around expecting that Trump is going to do this great thing. He's going to drain the swamp. And then all these people are going to be indicted, you know, and going to these military tribunals. First of all, the logistics of that, 50,000 people is almost the size of a small country. You know, the, the fact that we're going to prosecute, I mean, imagine the docket for real prosecutions for real people uh, who are in, you know, federal prisons and things like that. Where, what would they wait on for, for 50,000 prosecutions? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, it's, it's way out there in the left field. So I had to do a little bit of clarification. That's why I did the, the videos on that. Not because I was trying to, you know, destroy Mark Taylor, but just to get people to think clearly and, and rationally get grounded back down to reality and look at really what's happening on the bigger scale with Donald Trump. This is just the micro scale. We're not just talking about our country and, you know, Kavanaugh. There's a really big subject in what is going on there with the abortion issue. Um, they threw everything in except the kitchen sink at the guy to try to stop him from being confirmed. And at the time I was doing that video, I was thinking this was Ginsburg was going to be the second nominee. I was wrong, guys. He's already nominated one. Kavanaugh was his second nominee. Ginsburg would be his third. Right. Incidentally, Mark Taylor says that he's going to change all five of the uh, 
which is unprecedented. That's never happened. But I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a wild prediction. I mean, three is amazing. Five is unprecedented. If something like that happened, I would be shocked. You just have to wait and see. But the fact is, everything that God says is going to happen, better happen, or we got a problem. Agreed? I mean, the test of a prophet in the scripture says, if what he says don't happen, he is a false prophet and should be put to death. So my, my point in doing those videos was not that we should stone Mark Taylor, but we should hold him accountable for the things he's saying. Um, a lot of it is just outlandish. He's just talking, running his mouth. Just right. Want, and this bottom line for Mark Taylor is he's wanting to give hope. He wants to give you hope. It doesn't matter the truth. You just need the hope. And I've heard this before from other people who will compromise the truth because you need hope. Don't matter about the truth right now. You don't need to hear the truth. You need hope. And that is wrong. When you compromise, it's wrong. I, I know about the guy, or other guy who went on um, like um, many platforms and was trying to be very like a uh, Christianic and um, he was doing it just to sell books, just yeah, well, for the money, just money. Yeah, I got nothing wrong, nothing wrong with selling books, but when it just becomes a money changing thing, like when you, when Yeshua came in the temple to, to run out the money changers, right? It had become a business. I imagine it looked like the hallways of some of these um, uh, um, seminars and stuff, the Christian uh, seminars that I'd seen, gone to conferences. The hallways are so filled with books stacked up high on tables. And it's like the outer court of the, of the temple. That's where all the money changing has happened, right there. And so, you know, start thinking, wow, is this what you show us? Did he, did he deal with this already? Um, what's going on here? And sometimes those authors that are selling books, the truth doesn't even matter. It's just about selling books, selling as many as they can. And yeah, um, I heard the Holy Spirit says, beware of men selling books in the, in the end times. Clear as day, I heard it. That's why I put it in the title. Um, <clears throat> at Forest Tables, let's, let's just get back to codes up for this explanation. I did look for Mark Taylor's name and scanned around in a um, methodic way, kind of out pattern from his name, just searching, manually searching, and um, was able to find what I did. Um, however, that's not what the, the table that I've been working on mostly this month. It's, uh, it has been about the name, um, different variations. Um, this is my name forever. Um, who would they say that I am? I am that I am is another one, um, both from Genesis. And that's where I've, I've been this week. Who else has got codes that we can talk about? Um, I, I, I would actually like to pull up something that I'd done a, already a couple years ago, maybe to just sort of make a, make kind of flow along with what you're talking about. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. History 28. <clears throat> Actually, in 5775 or 76, I can't remember which year, I still have it documented. But there was, there's more to this code. There's like Russia going along here and the, the word atomic is there a couple of times. And so some of this, that is not in here. But I, I'm wondering about this code if, if this is old news or yet to come. Okay, 
I, you know, there's five, there has been now 5,778 Tishri 28s. <laughs> just, just to make that clear, the, the 5,779th one will be next year. All right. Um, well, wow. but what I, what I had done before is, is there was an earthquake on this day in, in Rome. Uh, and Dr. Glazerson did a video about that. So did Dutch sense. He actually warned about it. And there was other news about that. But Dr. Glazerson called uh, Rome, Italy, uh, 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 Rome, Edom. He called it Edom, Italy, which was interesting when that happened. But you have these elements in here, uh, the Jeremiah 23, uh, 14 and 15 verse, which is wormwood. You have comet right underneath and you have earthquake. This, these are your, um, the last, uh, the seventh seal and your, and your, the opening of the first seal and, or the blowing of the first trumpet and the blowing of the third trumpet in, in this table. <laughs> is what I'm look what you're really looking at. Okay, the great earthquake, the 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 comet that hits the earth, strikes the earth and then wormwood that passes by. And you have Mount Graham in here. Um so th this is an on ongoing I, I you know I I could uh say a lot of things about this. <laughs> and and make make do what uh brother Jonathan is, is talking about, I could really spin this and try and make it work every Tishri 28 as if it's prophetic, every Tishri 28. All right. But that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a pattern. Uh, uh, I'm looking, I'm looking for a pattern in this to, to, to fit scripture as well. I'm not just looking for just anything to be happening every Tishri 28 to make myself look prophetic. Okay. I'm looking for a, be a beginning and a, and a following through in scripture. You know, I don't know if you get me on, on what I'm trying to do here. I'm not just trying to say every Tishri 28, there's going to be a, a great earthquake or so there, there, there are elements that, that I'm looking for uh, that are actually biblical. They, fl they flow along with it and there's reasons for this uh because of what's going on uh between Yahoo and Babylon. There's judgment for sin, there's there's a call of repentance, there's there's uh uh the lack of righteousness and, and holiness in this world. There's <laughs> we're we're living in a wicked and deceitful age and and so there's there's gonna be judgment coming. So pro the prophet has to have a have a Actually, you can read John 16, and you, it's sin, righteousness, and, and judgment to come are the three things that a prophet has to be talking about before he can even be considered a prophet. Sin, sin, righteousness, and judgment to come are the three main elements. Amen. So I just wanted to put that out because, you know, I have things that have come to pass and I have things that haven't really come to pass. That's because of my own un own understanding and not understanding what the Bible codes may have said or may not have said, you know, that's, Amen. they have to be inspired by the Holy spirit. They have to be. So I'll just stop sharing. And but anyways, the codes are going to be a lot of times, Another facet, another, um, you know, if we're, we're looking at this scriptural text, what's encoded is another facet to that, that, that kind of complements that. There's, there's added details to it that gives you more of, of what's going on, almost a three-dimensional figure or picture of what's happening. Um, yeah, it's, it's not just about comet hitting the earth and wormwood passing and there's reasons why this is happening is because there's unrighteousness in the world and there's 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 messages that have to go along with that as well uh and only you can only get that from scripture who else has got a coat you, you working on anything scott 
Uh, yeah, bro. Um, you guys don't mind the background noise. I'm here again across the street at the food establishment. Um, they've been nice enough to let me sit here and use the Wi-Fi. Of course, I got something. Um, I was blessed with uh, being able to get out a little bit earlier today because I think we're going to be getting ready here in a little bit to head down to the panhandle while, while millions of people are, are fleeing <laughs> this next storm that's coming and we're going to be running right into it. Um, the, um, in the panhandle of Florida? Yeah, there's another storm coming in. Michael, yeah, it's all that. And it may come through It may come through the southeast portion of the country and, and come up here again into the Carolinas where, where Florence just struck. Uh, at a category one where it's going to initially make landfall down in the panhandle as a category three or maybe even a four because it just keeps strength gaining strength. A lot of chastening happening to this, this country right now. So it sure is. Um, it sure really is. And I, talking heads seem to forget and, and omit those uh, those facts. That the most high is chastening this country. I mean, every state has been flooded, even Puerto Rico, where they say thousands of people have died. The number is unclear, but here we are again. Yet another one um, going to inflict some some pain on the South. It sounds like, man. Yeah, yeah. Here, here we go, running right into the mouth of the storm. So definitely be praying for us. I think our boss wants us to be like right there in it when it comes in, so we can get started on uh, cleaning up and all that when it, when it comes in. So Yeah, we but, would see uh, convoys of tree trimmer trucks coming into Louisiana or even when I was even in Carolinas living during hurricane season, right before storm, they would come in and uh, they'd be all at the, all at the days in or something or, you know, holiday in waiting for the storm. And then even in the storm be out trying to restore power before the storm's even finished. It, that's, it's just amazing that those guys keep hopping like that to, to keep it going because people are on life support. People are, you know, they need their electricity because they've got things that are charging. They got to have battery uh, for whatever medical purpose. So, so those things are critical, man. Uh, you guys are out there you know, making sure people have lights and electricity. Man. Yeah, it's, it's a mad dash when the storms come in because we've got to work together with the power companies and whatnot to get everything restored. And, of course, getting trying to get people restored into their homes by getting all the trees out of their houses and driveways and making life normal again. It's, you know, but, but anyways, um, I, I was blessed with a little bit of time this morning to uh, listen to your, your upload last night, and it... it it just came as a blessing uh, to me because it was—it was, it was kind of like a twofold confirmation. Because I, I don't know really anything much of anything, if anything at all, about this. Uh, Mark, Mark Taylor, fellow Mark Taylor. I didn't know a lot either. I had to go and research. And, and but you, during your discussion, you you took a turn and you started talking about well, what are the um. What does the Bible really have to say about this country and everything? And and I had yesterday I had just started working on a code last night. I had some time last night, so I was kind of fooling around and uh, I was doing a code regarding that same thing. So I'm going to share my screen. You didn't happen to have to find a verse where it said, "I will make a full end to every nation that I have driven you." Because, you know, guys, they're, they're half the world's Jews are in the United States. If there's 15 million Jews, half of them are in the United States. That's just Jews. Not to mention all of the rest of Israel that's still in the spora. So if the scripture says, I will make a full end. In other words, I'm going to destroy every nation that I drive you to. Why? To, to drive you back to me in the end times. That would include the United States. And this is why we don't see this, you know, special chapter of, you know, what's going to happen to the United States in Revelation or in Daniel or any other places that the prophets talk about this judgment that's coming. Because there's not a special place for America. She's one of the whores of Babylon, you know, one of the daughters. So um, weighed in the balance and found wanting. 
Yes. There's. And, go ahead, brother. No, I'm just. It's a. It's a passionate kind of thing for me because people get into this. I'm. I'm just as patriotic as anybody else, guys. Don't get me wrong. But you right. cannot hide behind the flag and you know we're all that and bag of chips and no judgment coming to us. Hallelujah. Right. Um, <laughs> no. It's, we have to examine ourselves. This country collectively, what are we guilty of? And does the most I just overlook that? I don't think so, guys. He warns us, he chastens us, and he brings us to the point of repentance. But ultimately, the hammer falls. Yes. It just does. You know, when you flesh out the facts, it's just, it's just, it's not being unpatriotic just to point out the truth. Yeah. It, some people take it that way. Well, that's not it. I mean, let's just look at the bold page truths of, of being why we're... And, and, and not being delusion or, or deluded by, you know, all the hype. You know, I get it. Giving people hope, but, you know, hyping them up and making them think everything's going to be fine because we got this, whoo, we got this savior in White House now. He's going to change things, guys. He's going to make it better. He's going to make it great. Make America great again. What's wrong with those words if you're a Christian? Put America first. What's wrong with those words? Where's Yahuwah? Where's Where's you put Yahuwah first. Exactly. That's the wrong premise to start from. Make America great. Yahuwah will say, let's see about that. You put Yahuwah first, he'll make America great. That's exactly right. That's the key. That's the key. It's not that we put this president in the White House and, woo, here we go. Start the tribunals and get them all in prison because it's, it's cleaning house time. You know, it's, it's a great thought, but is it realistic? You know, I'm sorry, Scott. Oh, brother. oh no, no apologies needed, brother. It's, it's all, all uh, relevant input and very true. You know, he's, regardless of what his intent is, you know, I'm a guy that I'm a firm believer in the, the, both wings belong to the same bird. That, that's where I stand with everything as far as politics and, and global leaders and uh, national leaders, presidents, what have you. Uh, um, you know, regardless of the intent and regardless of the surface uh, appearance and what's said, uh, we see too much, you know, one hand is waving over here while the other hand, regardless of the left or the right, they, they both do the same thing. So, um, and we see, and there's not any one man who can stop what the scripture says. It's just not exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. So we see, away, but they're not going to stop it. They, you know, they stop what the father has purpose in. Right. Um, so the axis is uh, judgment, uh, judgment. America. starting at the bottom judgment of the USA. And uh, you have the abbreviation here for for USA, and and I just started this, like I said, so I haven't. It doesn't have a lot of detail. Um, what I thought was really cool was when I presented that table not too long ago for for Brother Jake, when he had seen that. If you remember, I was uh, that the table I had shown regarding the conjunction he had seen with Jupiter and Mars in the scales back in uh, January. And he opened his Bible and and to, to get a confirmation of what it meant. And this is where he looked here in, in, in Daniel 5, 24, 25. Uh, and, and this. Writing on the wall. And this is the writing. Mene, Mene, Tekla, Parson. This is the interpretation of the thing many God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. You, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. So, and, and, and that table was just USA. It was just the word USA. But here we see the same scriptures with the word judgment attached to it at the bottom. And we find, we find Trump here running through with the, with the Bob in the middle instead of the olive. But still, phonetically, I believe that works. And in here, at the bottom, you have uh, first uh, first Ezra. You have uh, Cyrus the king. 
right here in this in, where it would be i'm imagining right in here where trump runs through you're, you're still gonna have uh you're still gonna have ezra first ezra, where it talks about cyrus king of persia um on the first year of cyrus king of persia how do i move this thing uh, that the word of you of my mouth your might who might be fi- might be fulfilled the uh, you who has stirred up the spirit of cyrus king of persia and he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom uh, and talks about building a house and, and you know uh, where did where did, did have they moved that embassy yet at all or going to where is it tel aviv or was it actually in jerusalem that they're doing that i think that they are going to be be doing that but see that's a great point with um with the cyrus figure um what the cyrus figure means with donald trump doesn't mean that he's that, that you know let's put it in perspective of what cyrus did cyrus enabled the jews to go back and restore the breaches to rebuild he was a friend to the hebrews right so he was the vessel that the father used to bring back restoration Nebuchadnezzar um, and Darius um, and the other um, Assyrian that used in, in the two um, houses being judged. Cyrus but, was different. He was a different figure. Um, he was a conqueror. He wasn't as wicked like Nebuchadnezzar was just a wicked, wicked man. But he was still called a Mashiach. And here we are with, with Cyrus, the image of Trump called him a Mashiach, and it was because he was the vessel chosen to do what the Father wanted to be done. And the same goes for Obama. All the dirty work and all the nasty stuff the Father needed somebody to do to get the prophetic ball moving, Obama filled that purpose, right? And so here we are with Trump and the Cyrus. And incidentally, Cyrus lost his head, by the way. He was beheaded. I'm sure there's more to it here, but I thought it was, it was interesting. We have another table here with a Cyrus Trump connection and, and concerning judgment. So when you brought that up, when I was, as, as I was listening this morning, I thought that's pretty cool. I was just, I had just started this concerning the same thing. And, uh, there is so many codes with this, this, this term here, this, the abbreviation for USA, it, which, interestingly enough, when you look in the interlinear, this translation for Aleph Resh Hay is the word for a curse, accursed. It's kind of interesting how that modern abbreviation for the USA yeah. equates to accursed. I mean, it makes sense. And there's a lot of good tables um, that come up in the prophets that are relevant to America, even the phonetic spelling for America, if you key that in, there's a one that comes up in uh, Hosea, I believe that uh, concerning judgment, and, um, a house being invaded over your, your men, women and children will be overcome by the sword. Uh, us, uh, you know, and then you hear different talk about, you know, uh, there's been different, I don't know if it's personal prophecy or, or dreams and visions, but I hear from, you hear different things that are similar. There's like a common thread with people that have apparently have dreams, visions, what have you about um, calamities and, and invasion is one of those things that you hear people say, oh, well, there's going to be, Russia's going to invade us or China's going to invade us. Something's going to happen and we're going to be weak because there was a calamity of some kind as these uh, trumpets are blowing uh, and these seals are being opened. Uh, one of these things that's, and it makes sense because, you know, if we're invaded and we're, we're, we're rounded up and, and all this other stuff, you know, that would fit into revelation where you have the beheaded saints and all this stuff comes in with camps. And, and whatnot. So, but anyways, um, Americans uh, can't even fathom good. that, that, they, they have this mentality that everything's going to be turned around and days are going to be lengthened. We're going to be given more time and all this kind of stuff. Completely contrary to what scripture says. Matter of fact, Yeshua says, 
if the days are not shortened, all flesh would be consumed. <clears throat> but yet I'm, I'm seeing, you know, like Mark Taylor on Greg Hunter, he tell flat out tells Greg Hunter, Oh no, judgment is not coming to America. God's got his hand on America. Matter of fact, God's going to lengthen the days. Trump is going to cause, prosperity and God's going to lengthen the days and bless America again, seven times greater. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, hey, bro, bro. What I see going <laughs> on here. Let's test that. <laughs> What's the scripture hey, say? Um, Not even looking at the code yet, looking at the scriptures and it just doesn't line up. The, the scripture says, I will judge your sins seven times for your iniquities. Not that, you know, I'm going to bless you seven times. We've, we've got a long way to go before the blessings. You know, he can't bless this nation with blood on our hands, right? That's exactly what happened to Israel. They were so defiled from the, from killing babies and, and the murders. They couldn't be blessed anymore. The, the land was defiled. It, it was just blood cursed of because of that. And so I think that's what we're seeing the same thing in America with guys. We have surpassed the number now with, with abortions that that number is almost the size of a small country. Think about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's unfathomable. And then what, what heaven thinks about it, because we know that blood cries out to heaven. Um, you know, when Cain was killed by his brother, excuse me, when Abel was killed by his brother, his blood cried out to heaven. All right. And I don't think it was just his blood, but every descendant of Abel that cried out in his DNA. Imagine that on every wow. baby murdered. That's the, the sounds in heaven have to be deafening. And so Dude, I would Jonathan, think it comes a point where that is done. There's no more of that. Yes. The, uh, did I tell you they are thinking about lengthening the the um, time from f 14 weeks till 22 weeks for them to abort? I have not heard that. I'm not. That's I mean, disgusting. Longer, longer, longer in their term to abort a baby, longer term. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Here, here in Iceland. Hi. Hi. That's um, all. That's it's very detestable and, and it's, it's so much money in that because they're not just throwing those fetuses away guys they're processing them like it was a piece of, of meat um, for cosmetics for medical uses for um, research for um, additives in products I mean there's this there's this thing called cinnamon something or what how you say it Darla Oh, it's Cinemix. Cinemix, they put as a food out of, comes from, you know, fetuses. And that's just, that's just, that's just yeah. Um, if it's in a food and you're eating it, you're basically a cannibal. And without uh, even knowing it, it just is not, it's defiled. Yeah, they're using it as food food enhancers. I think it was Monsanto that brought that in, wasn't it? Yeah. And it, guys, we live in an age now where we, we have a lot of processed food. We don't, my, Grandma's not canning in the kitchen stuff we're going to eat next month or next year. It's being canned at Monsanto or Green Giant or whatever these big companies are putting into their foods. We are consuming it. Wow, just think of that name, Green Giant. Yikes. Nephilim. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm friends with those guys that don't that No, don't. they were they were cannibals. The Nephilim, right? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Well, I don't know if they were green, but they were giants. No, I know what you mean. Um with that with that company. Um it's a canning, big canning company in Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. And um both of those guys Russ and Dave, it's the two guys that own it, are subscribers. They flew me up to, to up there one time to come speak at a, some kind of uh, conference that they put on just for their workers and stuff. But yeah, processing food, 
in, in these days, like, you know, back when my grandparents were married in here, that kind of thing was, you know, canning and stuff was done for military for like sea rations and stuff. It wasn't, you know, mainstream, big, big mainstream yet. Um, like it is now TV dinners. Everybody's just, nobody prepares food anymore. It's all prepared, pre-prepared and frozen and then consumed. Um, completely unhealthy, filled with GMOs and poisons and, you know, anything agenda 21 where they want to kill you slowly kind of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, I, I don't want to cur curb that subject, but I, 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 I would like to sh uh, show you something about, uh, it may relate to the, uh, your JFK out outlook for Donald Trump and, uh, the Don, uh, Trump Cyrus code that I had, we, we produced like November 4th, 2016. I, I just want to show this to you. Sure. Um, cause brother Scott was talking about, um, the Trump Cyrus connection as well. And okay, here's Donald Dalit love moon Lama Dalit. And then you don't really have to put Trump in here because this is uh, Leviticus 23, 24 right here in the word to raw right there. So you have Donald and then to raw Trump trumpet, but you also have the Trump, the shofar running up along his name as well. This code is at 147,999. I put a row skip of three in there to reduce it down to 49,333. Um, now here's Isaiah 45, one running right through Donald's name. Okay. Um, down here, I think it's this one. This is the scripture where it talks about Egypt diminishing as a nation. And it shall be no more the confidence of the house of Israel, which bringeth their iniquity to remembrance uh, when they shall look after them, but they shall know that I am Yahuwah Ye Elohim. So he brings down Egypt to a base nation, actually. Uh, it, shall, it shall be the base, basis of the kingdoms. So this is an outlook of America. And we gave this message a couple of years ago that hey, America may prosper, but it's not not to continue prospering as a as a nation. Like it's a part of ju judgment. Um, but in here, this is the word murder, and this too here is the word I I shall be murdered right here. And here, let me bring that up. Let's type, type that in. Olive, Resh, Zadi, Het. Is that the wrong way? There we go. I shall be murdered. <laughs> Aleph Rej Zadi Het. That's this word right here. It's it's right along the plain text. At a 90 degree, you have Donald right here, and you have Anne Pharaoh right here. Um uh, Excuse me, my phone is ringing.
I'm I'm really sorry about that. I'll have to I'll have to do this another time. Okay, Chris. We love you, brother. Bye. Um, does anybody else have a table they want to share? John will be right back. Um, I had another really small one. Uh, Dan, did you have something, sister? Who, me? Yeah. I saw your screen pop up. I didn't know. Well, I do. I do, but you go ahead. You say you have another one. Go I had another it. short one that was kind of pertaining to the same thing here, so just let me. Yeah, do it. Welcome to the new student, by the way, and shalom, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Um, I had another table with this access term, uh, fire, fire from Elohim. Uh, this is in uh, Second Kings, when Elijah's calling down fire from heaven, and, and there's one time where it says um, the fire of Elohim came down, and um, you, right here at the bottom, you have the destroyer of the nations <laughs> running right into the mem. Um, and you have the destroyer right here, too. And in the same line, you have encoded USA. And you have Rome and a perfect skip running vertically. Uh, oh, that's pretty interesting where it says the word of Yahuwah. So this is all done by the word of Yahuwah. By his decree, as it's written. Uh, that's really kind of amazing how that's all so close and compacted right there. And this is just another one that I haven't been able to really search out extensively. It's just, uh, just another one that just began. But I thought that was really uh, relevant how the you have the destroyer of the nations right here. Uh, so I just wanted to share that. Real quick, I just kind of like an add on to the to the other one that which I could have. also be red destroyer of the Gentiles, right? Yes, um, I believe now I know where this is at, so I'll just cancel it out and I'll show you the scripture that it comes up in line uh, in Jeremiah 4 7. The line has come up from his ticket, and the destroyer of the nations is on his way, it has gone out from his place. To make your land desolate and your city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. Um, I thought there was a passage in here that mentioned destroyer of the Gentiles. If you will return. So this is all concerning judgment. Um, right up around here is where you'd have that USA encoded. Um, also on your skirts is found the lifeblood of the innocent poor whom you did not Fine, breaking in, you know, concerning with all this talk about abortion and everything, it's it's very related. Innocent blood, extremely. So related. you're talking about innocent, yes, and you're just talking about innocent blood. The very reason for this judgment, or or a very big reason, uh, um, showers have been withheld. So you're talking about droughts. There has been no latter rain. And you have a harlot's forehead. Wow, you refuse to be ashamed. So. We know what's written on the forehead of the whore of Babylon in in, the, in Revelation, right? Mother of all harlots, yeah. Yes, yes. So a lot of people seem to make that connection with America as well. Um, and it came to pass through the lightness of her harlotry that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and wood. So we're talking about idols and whoring to other gods gods of stone and wood mm -hmm. um, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart we shall feed you with knowledge and understanding well praise him that he's given us those and we, and we do have many of those good 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 shepherds good teachers amidst all the craziness that happens anyways um, like a faithless wife departs from her husband so you have been faithless to me oh house of Israel Says you who uh, so this is all very relevant to what if you will return to me uh, and if you put away your abominations out of my sight and do not waver. So that's 
Yeah. Did you did you get to see that, brother Jonathan? Yeah. Yes. We're filled. Uh, this country's filled with uh, with idol worship. Everything from you know self. Imagine that. You know, I don't have my phone, but you another. I see this everywhere. People going. You know, it's and selfie is such a yeah. appropriate name. It's it's all about lovers of lovers of self. Yeah, so lovers of self, um, and putting you know just everything, whether it's um, you know some sort of. And I say this because I see this happening with my kids as a problem. Is gaming can be an idol for kids, um, yeah. television or you know, sporting events like college football can be an idol for somebody else, but there's everybody has something they put important and first in their life before the most high. All right. America just leads the way in all of that. And incidentally, when, when, when the judgment does come, it's not just to America guys. Somebody emailed me and says, you, you know, you're always talking about judgment coming to America and then it, because I live in America, but you know, I just, it's unconscious, you know, thing that I do where I, I don't acknowledge the rest of the world. It's not that I'm ignoring that or saying, not saying that judgment's not coming to the world. It is the whole world is, you know, under judgment, but because I live in the United States, sometimes I only talk about this country, but you can, you can encapsulate the whole planet in this judgment. It's not just America. It's not an isolated um, judgment. This, this is coming to the whole world. America is just where I'm from and what, you know, I'm preaching to. So those people that are emailing me from Europe and be like, well, what are you saying? The rest of the world's going to be spared. No, <laughs> the whole world is coming under a judgment. America yeah, just a leads the way. Uh, if you see the imagery in the scriptures, there's this, mother of harlot and there's the daughters right all these daughters of of harlotry um it's different countries it's not just one country another thing too I, it, it's we've been i mean we've really been i mean i everything that's been going on for years now i mean uh, when all this stuff started happening uh, you know a handful of within a decade ago uh, and things are really ramped up i mean how many more how much more sea life has to die before a third of the ocean is finally dead, and there you you we all of a sudden we're we're in fulfillment right there. Dying every day, it's dying every, every day because they're not doing anything about Fukushima. First of all, that that yeah. is like a a hot spot of some of the most nastiest nuclear material in the world. This is man-made stuff, plutonium. Uh, or the what is that that's coming from uh, cesium um, and strontium that are coming from that? This stuff is some wicked, wicked stuff, um, and it's in our oceans. I've I've got a Geiger counter. I've I've meant to go down to the water and kind of test some things just because we're obviously in that uh, in that path of anything that's coming into the ocean. But yeah, that's. That has not been stopped, and that has been since what 2010? It's been seven years. years, eight years. That thing has been going off into the ocean. So yeah, it's dying. They're finding seepage over in Maine and Boston from Fukushima. Yeah, and if you, I've talked to a lot of people in the northern hemisphere. Um, over the years that seem to have problems with cancers, different kinds of cancers. Um, there's a guy in Utah that does um, the Fukushima activists, but he's convinced that that's how he got his ALL um, leukemia was because of Fukushima and the stuff that came through the atmosphere over um, into Utah um, from Fukushima. I don't know if there's any sign, anything to prove that, but, that's his YouTube channel and everything is dedicated to that exposing that. and he's been doing it for years and it just seems like the whole world has forgotten about this problem a very big problem it's not just Japan it's the whole world problem um, and nobody's done anything about it but Jonathan you know you're a veteran I'm a veteran 
And I think we hold a slightly different pride and in, in belief in America than a non-veteran does. We have it in our blood and, and we can't shake it no matter what. But, but Americans, we have a tendency to be a very arrogant breed. Yeah. It, and, and Texans above, above all of them, because as far as they're concerned, oh my goodness, there's nothing else north of the Red River. But, you know, it, Fukushima, that's, I, 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 it's the whole world's problem, but they want to put it all on us. All this pollution in the ocean and, and 90% of it has been proven to come from China, Japan, all these other countries. And we catch the blame for what other countries are doing. And, and in the meantime, we tighten regulations and tighten regulations and tighten regulations and we choke businesses and we send a business over to these countries that have no regulations. Yeah. So we're shooting the problem in the foot by making it our fault. Yeah. Our arrogance because of how we are, our pride in America. And, and you know what I mean. It's, yeah. it's that we put America above anything else. But yeah, it's, um, it's nothing wrong with being patriotic. Listen, America's that. It, it hits people like you and me a little different. Um, it's almost cultish to the point. Uh, yeah, we're, we're especially military personnel can get that to that point where um, it can even be an idol. Your country can be an idol where you put that, that kind of, even, even what the ditties they call the Marines to, to memorize God, country, core, God, country, core, family, God, country, core, family. Your family comes forth in the Marines. And this is instilled into every Marine. God, country, core, family. Right? And the patriotism. Families come, you know, after everything else. To a point, there's also a reason for that, and you know it. And that reason is because if you're putting the core before your family, you're protecting your family. Right. Yeah, I get that. But, but you know, but the families are often sacrificed. Um, yeah. Navy personnel, yeah. Marines who go off into their deployment at six months at a time, you know, going Thank out you. at sea, you know, families are, are, are neglected. They, they yes. truly do come forth in the line. Yes. So uh, it's, uh, it's hard on, on families, especially those that are deployed like that. And those are the hard charging ones. Those, those are very patriotic um, people. And uh, yeah, they, they love this country. We all love this country. We don't like to hear negative things about this country or, you know, even some of the secrets, the dark history of this country, the things that we've done, you know, um, genocides. We, we've been guilty of, of but, but then we go back to we stopped where other countries continue. Yeah. So when they compare those other countries to us and try to put those other countries above us, when we've stopped the bad behavior, not all of it, mind, I, I get the whole, but the industrial military complex, that's not really America. That's a whole global thing. So I get really annoyed when people blame us for everything when we know the bigger picture. Yeah. The ones who enabled all of that um, from the Obama administration, the, they called it very green, uh, the EPA and then they, all the regulations that they enacted. And they, what they did was say they made it very hard for manufacturing companies in America, um, the coal industry and stuff like that to operate. Manufacturing was gone. That's, that's something that Trump has brought back is those jobs in his country. And the regulations were such that they couldn't manufacture in this country because of the pollution issues, they were, the, the charges they were being for that because there was a, a Trump has done this uh, carbon tax thing where, you know, you can, you can manufacture, but we're going to charge you out of your, you know what? Um, so the incentive to move to China was very great under the Obama administration. Trump has kind of 
reverse that and charge China tariffs and um, taxes and things like that and has brought back manufacturing. Um, too little too late? Is it going to be enough to save this country? I mean, we can't jump out of the biblical narrative and just, and just decide, oh, here's a good place to get off and put a pause on the, the whole you know, end times thing. Um, no, we have Project Lilith. Abortion is still a problem here. <laughs> it's just a Lilith small a area of where Trump has um, affected this nation. Is it enough to turn this train around? I, I don't think so. I, don't, I just don't. It looks good right now on the surface. Uh, but this is long term. Um, you know, where do we find this in the Bible where, you know, things are turned around in any nation? We don't see nowhere in the scripture where the, where the father says, hey, you know, I like that guy. You know what? I'm going to don't 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 bother what I said before. I like this guy. Judgment. Hey, judgment's not coming. I still got my hands on you. I'm going to make you seven times great. There's none of that. It's, it's very simple. He says, if you live this way, these, this is what happens. If you live this way, this is what happens. He, he makes it very simple. It's, it's basically two ways. Live under his ordinance and statutes or live like a heathen. That's your choices, right? And he promises what will happen if you keep his statutes. He will bless you. He will multiply you. You will be protected. Right? But if you go this other way, you're going to be sick. You're going to be in debt. Your cattle's going to die. You're going to lose your land. You're going to lose everything. Rain's not going to come. It's going to be hard. So you decide. Well, the choice is ours, right? But that's the choice. It doesn't change, right? When we get a new president, those things don't change. This is still the same. Um, so... You know, and it's, it's a hard message to bring to people because they don't want to hear that. You examine the message of every prophet, they never wanted to hear that. Ever, throughout any of the prophets of the Bible, the people never wanted to hear what they had to say. They wanted to hear the other prophets that had the good things to say. Tickle my ears a little bit. Right? The king with Jeremiah did not want to hear what, what you were saying to Jeremiah. I'm more interested in what those... Other guys are saying that's going to happen. Let's talk about that. There's more happy things, right? A little more positive things. Hope. Give me some hope. I want some hope. And so the false prophets obliged. Oh, no, king. You have favor. You who is still with you, you have favor. Nebuchadnezzar will not take the city. Three incursions on the city. The first two, I would imagine the king is thinking, wow, maybe maybe this false prophet's right. He might be right. Nebuchadnezzar turned around and he went the other way. First time. Second time. By that time, the third time comes, that king is probably thinking, oh, he's not going to make it. We still got favor. We still got favor. Oh, wow. Nebuchadnezzar took the city. Judgment's here. His eyes were plucked out. And all of his sons were executed in his face while he stood there. And Nebuchadnezzar mocked him. And how Nebuchadnezzar knew about Jeremiah, I don't know. But the story is he knew that there was a prophet in the kingdom that was warning. And the, and the king ignored it. That's the story. <laughs> and, and incidentally... Jeremiah was not taken into captivity. He remained in Jerusalem. That's profound to me. The only, the only prophet warning about judgment coming, and he was left untouched. He remained in the land. Everybody else either killed or captured. I have a piece of scripture that I'd like to share, brother. Absolutely. I believe this maybe talking about prosperity it's in joel 117 where it says the seed is rotten under the clods if you know about farming 
too much rain will cause your seeds to rot right in the dirt. Let's pause right, right in there. The let's let's discuss okay. what's happening no. to America, Chris, right now. That this, very thing. That this, very thing is happening because of the rain. They're forecasting that the, the crops for this this season is probably going to be bad because of the water. That that whole idea that too much rain well rain is a blessing right and you hear a lot of ministries pour on the blessings and the prosperity but too much of it will cause your seeds to rot in the clods <laughs> or this is, this is just talking about uh, uh just this is spirit spiritual here yeah. uh and that's what's happening here you have a lot a lot of 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 churches that are just rotting because all the blessings all the prosperity prosperity will cause a nation to fall asleep yeah i remember um when the west coast a couple of years ago we we're still in utah um got just a tremendous amount of snow and this is right after a drought i mean several years of drought first the first uh when Trump first got in, things changed in California. They got dumped a lot of snow. And I even have a student over there. We went, darling, I stayed and I had this conversation. What do you guys think about all that snow you guys had? And now everything has been, so when it all thawed, they got all this green everywhere. Everything grew green and nice and lush and beautiful. But what happened was all that green turned brown when the water went away. And now we got a fire tender problem. And then it was vicious. So after all of that uh, snow melted, they had the worst fire season ever recorded in California. After that, all of that snow and water and everything was green and beautiful. And people there were thinking, oh, the drought's over. All the reservoirs are full. But had they just looked a little further down the road, they would have seen what was really going on. It appeared that everything was fine. Now, reservoirs are full. My grass is nice and green. Everything is beautiful. But just further down the road was destruction. Much, much of those homes and, and, and communities that was waiting for water are gone now. Complete Cities wiped out because of fire. You guys remember that? We just now come through that season where it's kind of tapered off. But it was almost two years of nonstop fire. And it was all because of that one season of a lot of rain, a lot of snow. And, and it appeared at the time, this is a blessing. It's such a blessing. All the reservoirs are full of water and we're the drought is over. Oh, okay. But the Could fire, our Heavenly Father be, be telling us something there? I, I believe so, because, you know, when it seems, when it seems like, and, and imagine, I see it like the Titanic. You know, you know this ship's going down, but man, the band's playing. There must be some, some silver lining to this. I mean, why is the band playing? And people were asking this question on the ship when it was going down. It was very strange the band kept playing. The reason for that was the band was giving everybody hope, keeping them calm and not panic, right? Keep them calm. You don't want panic in a time of disaster. So the band played on. And I think that's what we see in, in our country. Instead of people being realist and looking further down the road, it might look good now. Yeah, he's, he's turning things around. Things are looking good. But what does that mean? How does that translate further down the road? Because that's the real problem we got to deal with. Jonathan. Yes. And Leonardo DiCaprio froze. <laughs> what? He fro froze to death. He froze to death. Oh, may I share a little bit with you? Sure. Um. I, I was waking up from a dream like uh, three days ago or something <clears throat> and I, I think we here probably all have it quite good 
And it was like Yahuwah was saying to me, uh, I was saying to him, I have it really good. A and um, he said like, I, th I think he was saying like, no, you don't, you, you really don't realize how good you have it. And he said it like three or four times. He, I said, I know, I know I have it good. And he said, he said, no, you don't. Oh, Siri went on. But yeah, I was just telling him like, I said like, um, <clears throat> I know how good I have it. And he said like, no, you don't. Like in a very fatherly tone. And just assuring me that I didn't really realize how good I had it. And I was reminded of uh, in the dream or after the dream about the, like babies in in war trodden countries mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that and and in Africa and stuff. Oh yeah. Where like they would they would take their left arm from from just to get food. Yeah. Yeah. There's, so, there's places in the world where it's really bad. Um, yeah. You know, we have it. Africa, any country in West Africa, Ghana, Sierra Leone, any of those countries, yeah, is bad, ravaged by war and and poverty and you know, cr crime. I mean, rape and murder and things like that. Yeah, look what's happening in South Africa. The tables yeah. are, are turned from apartheid from years ago. This is crazy because years ago, more than 20 years ago, the same thing was happening, but just flipped. All the white people were killing black people. Oh, and yeah. now, and all the white people were in the government ruling. Now it's flipped. All the white people are being killed and all the black people are in the government ruling. And they're doing the same exact thing. They're genocide. They're going and killing people, children, babies, indiscriminately. That's bad. Yeah, hard to feel That's sorry bad. for him, though. Yeah. We, we, we had a, a gentleman who was in our in our tiny chat yeah. years ago who was yeah, from South I remember Africa. That. I remember that. Right in the middle of one of one of our sessions, he had a mob go right down his street. He had to gra grab his grab granddaughter his off the street and, and, and with a ha handgun in his hand. Yeah. He's and, also killed know. somebody in his house before. That same guy, he believer, he's a messianic believer. Yeah had to kill somebody who broke into his house. And, and it was, was a, a bad problem because gangs of people were going around targeting white people and families and breaking into their houses, murdering and all kinds of bad stuff. And he, Chris is right. We were in a tiny chat, sort of like this right here. And the guy had to get up and go defend his house because a mob was outside. Um, of his house, but he had already killed somebody before, before that he'd already, stop somebody from coming in his house and killed him right there in his house. Yeah. I haven't you know, seen that guy in years, man. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, he has, they don't message me anymore. You know what I'm finding out, you know, through the ministry, a lot of people, because they're not, they're stuck in the new Testament. They're not reading the old Testament. So therefore they're not comprehending the blessings and the cursings. They're stuck in this. I'm saved by grace deal. Yeah. And they're totally just forgetting about the, the old Testament. And it's like, look guys, you got to first read the old Testament, understand the old Testament to move into the new Testament to comprehend it because Paul has such hard writings. You guys are taking them out of context. You know, if you just go back and read the Old Testament and realize that when you are obedient to Yahweh, he, he'll give you the blessings. But the moment you turn on him, like a lot of the countries are doing, then blessings are going to turn into curses. And, and nobody's comprehending this. Yeah. You know, Peter even warns about this in his writing. He, he, he writes that, you guys, you're not understanding what Paul is saying. He writes very deeply, and, and there's error in that. So even in the time of Peter, there was problem. What we have today is folks taking Paul and making him an idol and they exclusively, they know everything Paul, but they don't know anything, you know, to not, they don't know where Paul's citing from and several places. Paul is citing scripture from the Tanakh, either the prophets, the writings or the Torah. And they don't know that they, they think this is the first time it's been heard, you know, a people who were not my people who are my people. Paul is saying this, he's quoting, 
Hosea. Well, most of the New Testament is mimicking the Old Testament. And I went over and we watched Scotty Clark's video. Now, God bless him. I love him. Yahuwah uh, does talk to him somewhat, but he takes it out of context. He, he shows in the one part of his video where it says, Paul's gospel. Well, all scripture is breathed out by Yahuwah. That gospel yeah. came from Yahuwah. It's not Paul's gospel. It's Yahuwah's gospel. Yeah, it's, he's, he's making a clear distinction that the Bible is, and, and so does um, the father of dispensation and pre-trib rapture, Darby, did the same thing. Rightly dividing the word means that this scripture belongs to these guys and this scripture belongs to these guys. And so Scotty's telling people that Paul is writing a gospel to the Gentiles and that Yeshua and the disciples were for the Jews only. And that is a fatal flaw. Um, right. All scripture is good for teaching, for reproof, and for um, doctrine. All I, mean, I, I would think like rightly dividing the word is like um, the gap theory in Genesis 1, 1, and 2. Right. Well, I would think you, more along the, line, the lines of line by line, precept by yeah. precept, here a little, there a little. That is yeah, yeah. rightly dividing the word. Is doing yeah. like what, what Darla will do. She'll take a word, a Hebrew word. She'll look at every letter. She'll look at the root word of that. She'll look at everything going on in that. And that is rightly dividing what's happening there. I mean, yeah. right? Analyzing that thing. It's looking at the whole counsel of God or Yahuwah, not right. just selected passages. It's cover to cover. Exactly. Instead of being hyper focused on Paul alone, right? You're taking all of the word in consideration. You're, you know, when Paul cited Joel or when Paul cited um, Hosea, you're, you're actually going to Hosea and getting the context of what Paul's talking about. That's rightly divining, right? Not just taking parts of the scripture and say, this belongs to this people and that people. That is not what rightly dividing is. And um, it's sad to see that, here with Scotty, he's taking those very same traits that I was talking about with dispensationalism, and he's, he's teaching that. It, he's all out Darbyism right now. What he's doing is he's trying to uh, separate the Jews from the Gentiles when he's not comprehending that there's Israel and there's Gentiles. He's got an identity crisis still. Are one body, you know? Yeah. And he wants to put the Jews in one and tell them, oh, well, let the Jews handle it. Yeah. You know? With, he's not understanding the grafted in, you know, if, if Yahuwah cut off the, the, the root, how much, you know, what do you think he's going to do to the grafted in? You know, he totally just doesn't even comprehend the grafted in part. You're right. Is, That's the fundamental problem that he has is identity crisis. He doesn't realize that there, there isn't another tribe called the Gentiles. You're right. grafted into Israel. You're no longer called a Gentile. If you're part of the body, you're, Part of the tree you're you're just a part of it you you know and so you have to make that distinction there's not this this other group over here that is dispensationalism and um once you realize oh wait a minute i am israel we're all israel we're, israel is is hiding inside of the church right because not everybody i'm going to say this, not everybody in the church is israel right. a lot of imposters in there there's a lot of pretenders. There's a lot of deceivers. Now, there are sojourners to join themselves to Israel, but, but they're sojourners. They're part of Israel, not the deceivers, not the ones pretending, right? You know, whatever. The, you know, the, 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 without the root, you can't, you can't be grafted in, you know? Right. Yeah. Exactly right. The, there are just two trees, the wild olive tree and the pure one. Yeah, but see what what happens in that imagery in Zechariah is they're blended. The oil from both of those trees are blended, um, and it's in the what comes out the other side is the one new man concept. The the old the uh, the wild olive tree and the natural olive tree creates this one new man. So the the Jew the or the the Hebrew and the Gentile coming together, um, the grafting in it, that whole imagery. And incidentally, when you reverse that and look at that in Revelation, it's talking about the same thing in 
chapter 11, verse 4, and then chapter 4, verse 11. It's a mirror image of the same exact thing. That's great. Right. And Identity Crisis is just a three-hour teaching, but so phenomenally helpful in opening people up to understanding that they are Israel. Yeah. It makes me think of the example, the proverbial example of the blind men that are examining the elephant, right? They all are examining a different part. Um, and so if somebody's just examining the white, smooth tusk, and maybe they can't see, but maybe they're getting some light coming in, and, oh, this is white, it's really bright, and it's really smooth to uh, describe the whole elephant just from the tusk is really missing a lot of what the elephant's all about. Amen. Has anybody else got codes? I haven't been able to get my keys to the Bible to work yet, so <laughs> I don't have one. I got to get that work on. I do have one if you guys are up to it. Absolutely. Okay. Let's see if I can get a bit bigger. Oh, I love your codes. They're so pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, what's interesting is um, Chris had a table that was 147,000, a skip of 147,000 and some change. And this one's a skip of 147. Nice. And then uh, a couple times people have mentioned Hosea, and he's in this table too. And uh, so... I think we've got a common thread going through this meeting. So this table is the Aleph Ta, which is the beginning and the end. You guys probably know that already, the first and the last, which is a name for Yahuwah. And this table is found in the Book of Numbers. Uh, the access term is in red, starting at the bottom, Ha, so the Aleph Ta, going up. And um, the verses that it crosses over, it's talking about the tabernacle of, of the congregation. So that's where Yahuwah met with um, his people. So um, let's see, I kind of have it mapped out a little bit. I'm not just going to go around the table perfectly. It's going to be a, a couple of different themes. Um, first off, it's about the Aleph Ta, uh, Yahuwah. So the access term you already saw. And then the Aleph Ta is also Yeshua, right? It says in the book of Revelation a couple of times that he is the first and the last. Behold, I was dead and I am alive forever and evermore. So we know that he is also the Aleph Ta. And he's in the purple here um, twice, Ye Yeshua going across this way. And then starting here with the Yod going down diagonal there's the shin in there and it's crossing over the access term of Aleph Ta and uh, there it's sharing the Vav there with Yahuwah in the pink going across and Yahuwah is crossing the access term so I think that's neat that they both cross and overlap each other um, Yahuwah I also put in here, of course, he's many other times in this table, in the plain text, and uh, but I, I put just a couple of different ones. The one because he cr uh, crossed the access term there, and then I like the skip there, the vertical skip. Um, then up at the top in the, the orange here, uh, starting with the kuf, it's kadosh, which also um, can mean Holy One, the Father. Uh, another name for the Father is um, Creator in the red here. Um, Bara, Creator. And when he revealed himself to um, Moses, he called himself um, Merciful and Compassionate. I forget. I. Well, that's the verse that, it, but it's it's uh, repeated many times in the Tanakh where he says. He's merciful and compassionate, long-suffering, you know, all of that um, good stuff. So merciful and compassionate is, um, let's see, 
here in the orange going across this way with a skip of one. And Merciful is also um, in, in this light blue here. Uh, same, ac same skip as the access term, and it's sharing another word here. I'll go over that later, but Merciful is here four letters, starting with the resh. So we have Merciful twice in this table. Uh, heavenly, we have in this light blue, Shamimi, going up diagonal. Um, intelligence, uh, uh, the Father is, you know, all-knowing. And so it starts with the Ta, going to the Bet, over to the Hay. Um, in the, the purple here, starting with the Mem, is Messianic and uh, pierced. Now it's not the same spelling, um, you know, uh, Yeshua, his hands were pierced. Uh, it, this does mean to puncture, but it's not the same word that's used in Zechariah where, where he says, they will look on me whom they have pierced. But I decided to put it in anyways. Um, well, let, here. It's uh, right here, starting with the, the noon going up. Same skip as the access term. There were a lot of words I, I, that I thought were relevant that were the same uh, skip of 147. Then there's also knowledgeable, which I, I could have mentioned with all knowing, uh, but knowledgeable is in the pink right beside the pierced. Um, it starts with the yod going up. Uh, then we have yellow and the purple, let's see, Pentateuch. So that's the, the first five books, it's the yellow and the pink. Sorry, where is it here? Oh, it's the one that's overlapping with um, Merciful. Okay, so it starts with the Het going up, four letters. And uh, we also have illuminated, and the Father is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So more, more. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And uh, prophet is in the, the blue here. And this is the, the other word for prophet other than um, Nabi. This is, means prophet or seer, and that's what Samuel was. He was called a this this word here um yeah starting with the rash going up and i thought this was neat we have um arbitrator you see here that's in this teal arbitrator is like a mediator going up barar and then there's also to mediate which is over here to the left, um, starting with the lay med going up. And then there's also mediation. So that, that's all what Yeshua does for us, right? He's our mediator. So it's going down here in the, like the purple or the plum diagonal. So three, three words to do with mediation. We have um, utterance or speech twice and that's in the the pink and both of them are the same skip as the access term um starting with the the aleph amar and it's also over here to the right amar going down and uh going along with that we have to say to utter and that is let's see white and green that's here starting with the lame med going down, Lamar. A um, couple of words about being old, like it's not the same spelling as ancient of days, but it means old, uh, like very old. Like the father revealed himself. Some people say that the, you know, the book of Enoch could be the first book and that was written, what was he, the seventh from Adam? So, and Adam probably wrote stuff down too. So I think the father's revealed himself right from 
the beginning, right? So from ancient times. Um, so there's two words in here, uh, starting with the, the noon. Wait a sec. Yeah, going up. Um, sorry, starting with the mem, going up. That means ancient. Um, or uh, prehistoric or antediluvian. And then it's also here, down below here. This is ancient as well. Here, with the four letters. Noon, Vav, Shin, Noon. Um, twice we have government. His, you know, his government will have no end. In the purple, going down. And just over really close, um, starting with the mem, uh, guard, and yeah, I should do the, I should break these tables up because it gets to be too many words for me to find them, um, guard, m m mem shomar is in the yellow and the teal, mem shomar, let's see, <laughs> Uh, if anybody finds it before me, oh, there it is, Mem Shomar. And it, Mem Shomar, and that's crossing over uh, HaMikdash. So that's the tabernacle, so to guard the Mikdash. And that, that's in the plain text. That's, um, again, talking about the, the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron. Um, then we have Eliel, starting in the teal, in the aleph, going down. And Eliel means El is my El. Uh, Ye Yahuwah, I showed you that already. And then to change the topic slightly, oh, somebody's buzzing their lawn. Sorry, I hope that isn't too loud. I'm out in the backyard, it's so nice today. So in the um, light green <clears throat> here, nish Nishima, it means um, breathing or breath or wind, and it's twice in this table. Uh, the other time it's down here, going the opposite way, Nushima. And uh, the father breathed the breath of life into Adam, and uh, Adam became a living soul. So um, living or alive, if you see in the green here going down, it's Bechaim. So that means alive. And then the reason he created people was all about relationship. And <clears throat> in the blue here, it's B'nai Israel crossing over the access term. So we've got Allah wanting a relationship with the children of Israel. And then to reiterate it, we've got Israelis. Let's see, Israeli here going up. Um, Manasseh is right here in the the yellow Manasseh. Now Ephraim is, is up here too. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have it in here, but Manasseh and Ephraim was in the plain text. But I don't know if I cut it off when I made the table. Um, but it was in one of these lines near the top. But I missed it. I'm going to have to go back and put it in because I think it's important. Um, Covenant is here in the pink. Barit. And tabernacle. Thanks for your patience, guys. Oh, the buzzer's getting closer. It's probably getting louder. No worries. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm trying to speed up. You Mish have a cap captivated <laughs> audience. Oh, thanks. Hey, captivity is in this table. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Mishkan, that's the, uh, the uh, temple, the tabernacle. The tabernacle, yeah. Oh, the mikdash could be the temple as well, the sanctuary or the temple. Um, Arona, Arana, I don't know if I'm saying that right or not, but if you remember, he's the fellow, he was the Jebusite that uh, David bought the threshing floor from him so that he could do that, um, make an altar to um, the father because he, he stopped the, um, the plague because David had, made, had done that census that he shouldn't have. So, and, and that's where that was on Mount Moriah. So 
you know, you just think of it from the beginning of time before even Adam was created, Arana was going to be the one who had that threshing floor that David bought it from. And then the son of David, you know, is our Messiah. It's just um, amazing to think about all the, the timing, how the father was all knowing there. Um, captivity is in uh, yellow with the brown. So they're, because of their disobedience, um, Ephraim and Manasseh and the whole works of the children of Israel went into captivity. So there's captivity. And uh, then just above it, right touching, you know, the Aleph Ta is return. Um, Israel's told again and again to return to me and I will return to you. And then Hosea is um, down here. That's supposed to be a, a hay. See, it's Yahuwah going across there, so they always block out one of the letters. So that's Hosea going up there, four letters. And then uh, he was the one that, you know, had to marry the prostitute. And she went off and committed adultery, you know, and that's uh, typifying Israel going off to the uh, idols. But he was told to marry her, and uh, we have married over here. We're almost done, guys. So, where is it here? Pink. Oh, it's up here. It's overlapping. So, Nishai. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's only four letters, and it's overlapping. Ancient. Okay. Wow. So, married, and then... Um, you remember Yeshua went into the synagogue and he gave that prophecy from Isaiah and he left out a part of the prophecy. Um, but anyways, he was speaking about the Jubilee and here we have the Jubilee in the dark blue going across here. And that's when we're going to be married to him and live happily ever after, right? The, the great jubilee, a thousand year reign with him. Um, and then two, two more words that may or may not be relevant, but to me they were. Um, we have onyx, which overlaps on Hosea, um, Shoham, which was in the Garden of Eden, or at least in that general vicinity. It, uh, it mentions Ophir, gold from Ophir. And here's Ophir. Right over here, the same skip. So onyx was in the breastplate of um, Aaron, you know, with the Urim and Thummim. And I speculate, I just speculate, that those onyx stones could have come from Ophir. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, that's the table. And uh, any questions or anything not clear? Really beautiful. I think the, uh, <laughs> the lawn guy came from your house and now he's at my house. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. So he's right right outside the window. Um, well, since this meeting started, this is the third person that's decided to cut their lawn. The first one was the, guy, the person right beside me. And so then I went inside and then I came outside and two more people are <laughs> going at it. So, yeah, that's funny, huh? Yeah. And now, now he's in Hawaii. Just had a lot of rain, so the sun is out, and it's kind of remarkable that they're cutting because it it really needs to be cut. And um, we've had a lot of rain, so the opening the window is like now. Right? <laughs> There's supposed to be a lot more rain coming um, this week. The rainy season is here. Mm -hmm. It's a really beautiful looking table. Very small area. Um, she's got it at 147 is, is her width. And, you know, what's really profound is the number of vertical anomalies that she's got in there. She's able to isolate and um, pull it all together. It's just beautiful. There are other tables um, waiting to be found with the olive ta. I just picked the one that had the smallest skip. But if anybody likes that term, there's more to be found. Yeah. I didn't close it, did I? Now I'm not seeing that thing, how to close it. Hang on. 
Oh, now there's a plane flying overhead. That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'm going to close it out here. Stops here. Yeah. Does anybody else want to close? Nobody? Let's see. You're a little bit faded out, your voice, brother. Me? Brother John. How's that? Is that better? A bit. Yeah, we got uh, people outside working. Well, everyone that I've, I've got in front of me, we've talked about. <laughs> so I don't have any codes. Uh, other than what I did last night on the video, everything else we've talked about, and there's been no progression. I, I, I could try to show that Donald Trump code over again before I was interrupted. I Things have settled down now. My brother's come home and the phone is not ringing at all. Yeah. We, we, do you mind? No. Okay. I'll try this. I'll try this over again. Donald, and then Trump up here in Leviticus 23. Um, Dalit Wav, Noon, Lama Dalit. You have stars of across here with the Wav sharing the Wav in Donald and the Dalit with Ju uh, Yehuda up here as well. And Yehuda runs... Uh, horizontal with the scripture in Leviticus 23, 24, and in the 25, actually, over here. At the end of that scripture, you have the children of Israel and Cyrus right here. Um, what I wanted to point out in here is this piece of scripture here about Egypt and how this is uh, associated with America and what's going to happen to them. They'll be reduced to a base nation and no longer be, be the confidence of Israel. Um, you have up here the year uh, Hei, Tau, Shin, Ayin, Het, along here with Aliyahu right here. But it's attached to the word battle or war. But right below it, which gives me pause because... This is the king of Israel and the word Hillary attached to each, each other. And it's interesting that the Israeli elections are, are about to take place. There's been a lot of uh, heated battles between the inner parties about um, the Haradri and, all, and stuff like that. But um, there's going to be an early election in Israel, probably in 2019. And I believe they're going to try and do what they did the last time there was an election. Um, Obama and Hillary tried to influence the election, actually, in Israel. And it, it, uh, a company kind of got in a lot of hot water with uh, Herzog and the, and the Zionist Union Party. The, that's the leftist party in, in, in Israel, the national left, for for paying big money to try and keep Netanyahu from being elected. And that's actually prophetic because the whole political scene when Yeshua was in Israel was frozen, really. And that whole scene is supposed to carry on like 2,000 years later. Another Edomite is supposed to rule over Israel during that time. And that, that could very well happen. And, and if they got, ben, just think of this, if they got Benjamin Netanyahu and Donald Trump out of power at the same time, you, you, you can just imagine how fall this, this world would fall into sin and, and wickedness. Okay, and, and that message actually came uh, just not too long ago from Donald Trump to the Christians. He said the, the midterms, have traditionally been ruled by the liberals. And when that happens, it's, they're going to re reverse everything that Donald Trump has done or try to. So there's a, there's a, there's a war going on in, in that 
to uh, political to try and control. And like uh, Brother John has pointed out that they want, they he really upset a lot of plans that was supposed to be uh, inherited from Obama to Hillary. And, and they just may get it after the midterms. And if they get Benjamin Netanyahu uh, out of office, that means they'll have control over in Israel as well. So there's a war going on, and uh, you can see this uh, plainly in the codes. Uh, 5778, battle or war, and then you have Hillary, Hey, Yod, Lamed, Resh, or uh, Yod, Hillary, and the king of Israel here. But you also have Sukkot here, which just passed. Tal. Mav, Kaf, Samak. And then, of course, you have the Isaiah 45 1 scripture. You have Donald Trump and Pharaoh here. And then you have I shall murder in Yehushua. Um, then down here you have Eliyahu twice. Down here, I was I was looking for something about the two witnesses. Um, uh, this is pro prophecy, Eliyahu prophecy. Could be talking about Eliyahu rips, but this is an interesting right here, where the word uh, to calamity or lamed calamity, Aleph Samak. Wav Noon is is kind of attached here to <laughs> right here and the stars the stars of Trump. Oh connected to the Trump name then. So uh and then and then again I, I pointed this out uh I shall murder. Yeah. Uh, search. That's the same word used for assassinate as well. Yeah. I'm, I lost it. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. I shall murder. That is Strong's number H7523. And that's what's it's right in the plain text. It's not it's not an ELS, it's in the plain text right here. And then this I tried a, another variation with a a, a yod. So he is mur he is murdering. Or he shall murder. And that's <clears throat> Wav Resh Zadi. Head. That's crossing right over top of here. Here, here's the rash right here. For uh, actually, this this here is Passover. It's the the first the first of the or no the Nissan one. Pardon me. The first first month and the first day of the month. That's Nissan one. Is hey, Chris. Right yes. When you first started to look for this table, were you consciously looking for Leviticus 20, something with Leviticus 23? Like, uh, that's no, just so no. amazing that that, no. that well, has all the different feasts in it, and you've got the different um, allusions to the feasts, you yes. know? That, that's uh, just uh, simply amazing. <laughs> yeah, okay. that, is, that is amazing. I, I was, well, that, that, that is a very interesting component about the Bible codes is whenever I put Donald's name in there, somewhere around there, it'll be talking about a trumpet somewhere. And in this instance, actually this code, if you just look at it, it's at 147,999. It's still attached to it. So these, these two pieces of scripture actually come closer together in, in its original ELS or page width, but wow. the fact that it's, it's sitting right next to Torah 
wow. Yeah, that's that's nothing short of phenomenal. And, oh, and you have as Calf, as Cyrus, Donald Trump, as Cyrus, right, running right over top. So I, I, I believe this is could be a political war. I may actually, I was, I was looking at this as something that may be have to do with Ezekiel thirty-eight, but uh, it looks more to me like it's a again, this here is a political conflict with Hillary and Donald. Yeah. Uh, you see it very strongly here, Hillary, over top of the King of Israel. Uh, I, I believe that <clears throat> what it could be talking about is a political war and and a, and a possibility that he could be assassinated as well. This is what I wanted to point out is, is that very strongly in here, like this is plain text right here. This is, hold on a second, I'll just go there. Yeah. And it's the abacus, abacus effect. Talking about Pharaoh Nico. Yeah. So if you think about Cyrus, um, so Trump in, in the Cyrus world today, um, it could be the fact that he is a conquering businessman. His his motto is win, win, always winning, winning, conquering. The next business deal is you know it's the battle. Um, so he has this conquering mentality. It's the very same way um, uh, Cyrus was. Cyrus was a warrior. He was a general. He was a conqueror. He, he just, he lived for battle. He, matter of fact, he was killed at a battle and he was beheaded. So um, with that in mind, and you're thinking with the connections with Trump, you can see the parallels there with Cyrus. All right? He is for the Hebrews. Who's also this very aggressive warrior uh, leader. Trump could be very well the vessel that leads us into war. He's, his banter, his rhetoric has been <laughs> on another level as far as presidency is concerned, guys, right? He's been like twi twitting. No other president tweets or has been. They're mine. He puts it out there. And, you know, I posted a video of Russia um, – television was basically some talking heads from Russia <clears throat> just to give the Americans the idea of, of how we are perceived even in this time when all this crap is going on. Uh, they happen to be talking about the, the, the missiles and uh, the interceptor missiles, the S uh, 300s that were just sent to Syria. Uh, the focal point, mind you, right? So um, the burdensome stone and the, um, uh, Damascus is a ruinous heap, part of Isaiah, prophecies of the end time. We're right in the middle of that. And here we got over here, these Russians who are commenting about this and commenting on the, you know, the capability of this American president. Is he strong? Is he weak? What is he really doing here? Uh, because the, the, the representative from the United Nations says those missiles will be removed. They were analyzing those words from, uh, I think her last name is Bailey. Hutchison Bailey is the one who made that comment. Those missiles will be removed or taken out, right? So they were, they were analyzing those words from, from Hutchison Bailey. What does taken out mean? Are they going to come to war? Are they going to attack us? I mean, these are Russians. It's like them being on Fox News and you got all these generals and stuff on Fox News talking about Russia and interpreting what they're doing. Except it's this, this is about us. And they're saying, what is the meaning of this? What does she mean by this? Are they going to attack us? Is there going to be some aggression from this president? Right? So they already see this president as a different one than Obama was. Right? This is a different, this is a different one to deal with. He's a warrior, and I think he might be the vessel that, that you, you know, takes us or, or leads us right into the world war that the Bible says will happen. So, <clears throat> um, I, see it, I see it fulfilling uh, as far as prophecy when, when 
Chris and I were able to distinguish, wow, there's a connection to the 45th president and Cyrus 45 of the Bible. Could this mean at the time of the election that we got two possible ways we could go, either Jezebel or Cyrus? You know, we thought, wow, this is a great, this is a, it's a great find. It's a huge revelation. Amen to that, brother. <laughs> you know, we had this choice that we could make. If we went down this one way, it was going to be bad. If we go down this other way, it's still going to be bad, but not as bad. You know, maybe there's some, some, you know, re redemption in there. And I think that's the key to it. Because in the chastening that the father does, what is he asking? What does he say? If you come back to me, I'll come back to you. So in all the chastening, he's looking for us to come back to him. And I'm talking about collectively as a nation. So Kavanaugh getting in is, and then, you know, Ginsburg coming out and they getting somebody else. That would be three. And that would be the deciding. They're already thinking with just Kavanaugh in there. We're the Roe v. Wade is in danger of being overturned. Ginsburg would be the, you know, replacing her with somebody would be the, the, the hair that broke the camel's back. So turning that and reversing that, I think, yeah, the Father would allow us to try to redeem the times and redeem what we have done. But does that avoid judgment? Does that avert chastening? Not at all. I think we still come under chastening. The world still comes under judgment. America may have a chance of being less severely judged. Does that make any sense? When he's of giving us an opportunity through this vessel to write some of the things our fathers did. Because because a lot of these laws, I was just born at the time of Roe v. Wade being legalized. So that really had nothing to do with me. However, I could have been a casualty of that because I was born to a single mother, guys. We might not know that. Right? Um, a lot of the girls that grew up with my mother probably encouraged her, oh, this baby's going to ruin your life. You need to go on to college. You know, women's liberation was happening back then. So my mom was being influenced by those around her that, oh, you have this opportunity now. You can legally get an abortion and this won't mess your life up. My mom had a, had a baby when she was 17. I don't know if you know anything about American culture, but back in those days, it really wasn't cool to be not married and having a baby at a, as a teenager. So there were a lot of young females having abortions. So I could have easily been a casualty of, of that time. But here we have the opportunity 40 years later when I'm a grown man to overturn and right those sins. I think it's just like a, a just and loving Elohim will afford us that opportunity before judgment comes. It may make sense. Anybody had anything to add? Yeah, we're <laughs> glad you're here, Jonathan. <laughs> so am I. I, I. My mom is as well. Uh, mom yeah. was never ashamed to have a baby. Um, my grandmother, on the, on the other hand, was very concerned. And this is just from stories I hear. She was protective of my mom, moved her back into the house, and um, of course to be close to me and stuff. But um, it was taboo in those days, guys. <clears throat> we were just coming into the time where um, – yeah, there was big changes. Women were becoming, you know, out in the work field. They they did away with the bras. Remember that? The women's liberation, when they were throwing away the bras and stuff. My mom missed all that. She avoided all that, thankfully. But yeah, we're seeing that we're seeing the the results of that now in the generation that we're living in now, right? With the absurd things that women are doing at some of these women feminist left-wing uh, LBGT and Hillary support these groups where they're dressing up in, in like a vagina or, you know, completely naked and, and doing crazy things while they're screaming at the top of their lungs. This is the product of that, guys, from the 1969-70s era. <clears throat> it is it's what we're dealing with today, the... Uh, there's nothing wrong with a strong woman. 
don't get me wrong, I'm not hammering women, but um, that movement did a lot of damage to the core of American families, right? It flipped the role. They had all these women going to the, the workforce and men staying home, taking care of babies. That happened to me. Uh, my ex-wife, when we got married, was in, she, I was, we were, she was in college and I was working. So, and that continued and continued through all of her degrees. She got three degrees while we were married, 10 years of nonstop college, over $160,000 in college. And I was at home taking care of infant babies, complete role reversal. And it's, it's, it's just not natural. Uh, it was emasculating for me. There were times where my mother-in-law, which I lived 25 feet from right next door and her would, you know, completely humiliate me. The, the, what I was trying to do on YouTube and stuff was mocked. It was very tough, but this is the status of a lot of Americans today where, where you have strong women in, in the, the mother role who have a professional job. Maybe they have several college degrees and they're out breadwinning and then coming home and trying to do some motherly roles. And it's just, it's not, um, it's not functioning right. We have a very dysfunctional families in our, in our country. It's all out of whack. <laughs> um, is it progressive? Is it progression? I would, I would say in the wrong way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not healthy. We don't have families that have family dinners anymore and, and, and things like that. Everybody's on their own sheet of music and, and doing their own thing. All right. Families are splitting. Now marriages are guaranteed 50% of all marriage or is even higher now. It might be even higher, but at one time when I looked at that statistic, it was 50% of all marriages in the divorce. So it's like a toss of a coin, whether your marriage is going to work or not. And, and from what I hear is um, that number has gone up in the will divorce category. Um, Anyway, I'm ranting now. I apologize. Anybody got anything to add? Everybody doing okay on the modules? Any questions? All right, guys. I'm going to uh, end the class. I did get this recorded, so uh, it will be archived. Let's pray, and then uh, we'll see you in the next video. Uh, video. Next meeting. <laughs> next video. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for these students and what you're doing uh, in this class. Um, but we just, we just consume the revelation, Father, that you send us. Just send us more, Father. We love the calibration that you're giving us in our lives, that, that you're tuning us into you, Father, that you're correcting our course to where we are in our walk, Father. We just thank you for that. Thank you for our Savior, Yeshua, that you have redeemed us back to you through our Savior. Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you for the revelation of your name and the power of it, Father, and your promises. We thank you. We exalt your name. Abba, I ask that you go with these students this week, that you keep them protected from the enemy, that you um, inspire them in their studies, Father, that you would meet them there in your word and reveal yourself in a mighty way. And Abba and I ask that you continue to be with Chris, our brother, in this hard, difficult time, Father, that you would soothe his heart and you would give him shalom and you would give him wisdom and how to handle this situation and that he's uh, wise in these decisions, Father, because in trauma, we can lose our mind and, and things are hard for us to understand and, and uh, work through, Father. So give him peace of mind and wisdom. And ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. All right. We love you guys. Good Amen. 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 We'll see you in the next, in the next class. Um, I'm going to share it on YouTube, guys. So just, just a forewarning. I'm going to probably share this. Shalom. We'll see you in the next one. Shalom, everyone. Shalom, all.